Ladies and gentlemen, I'll say what I said before and I'll say it again because it matters. We didn't ask for this. This is not a country that relishes war and we're not a country of warmongers. We're a country of peace-loving people who would love it if we lived in some form of utopia and everybody around the world felt the same way. Unfortunately, they don't. There are a number of people, animal savages, and a number, sadly, of countries led by animal savages who would like nothing more to see us dead, including the death to America, Iranian crowd, of which Soleimani, Qasem Soleimani, head of the Quds Force, was a lead figure for 20 years. Two, zero. 20 years. This guy was washed in regional and U.S. blood in Lebanon, Bahrain, Iraq, Syria, Yemen. This guy was a monster. He was involved personally, personally, in making decisions that led to the deaths of hundreds, if not thousands, of U.S. soldiers and potentially tens of thousands of people, if not more, in the regions I just addressed. President Trump last night made the bold decision to take him out at the airport. Have an article up at the Washington Examiner today. Decisive defensive action. Pentagon declares that U.S. killed Kasim Soleimani on Trump's orders by, uh, by Russ Reed. It'll be up at the show notes at Bongino.com today. Check it out. Good piece. Ladies and gentlemen, the POTUS wasn't kidding. POTUS, of course, an acronym for President of the United States. President Trump wasn't messing around. Thank you. Now, sorry about that. Sometimes old Secret Service talk comes out. But... <laughs> Folks, if you played this man for a fool, you grotesquely miscalculated. Suleimani thought he'd get out of that Baghdad airport. No problem at all. You know why? Because he'd done it with impunity forever. Traveling around the region, initiating proxy wars, killing U.S. soldiers, giving orders to have U.S. soldiers killed, giving orders for assassinations on U.S. soil. Do you understand the savage this guy was? He miscalculated because President Trump was, as I've said often about his foreign policy approach for people who mistake him for being an idiot, a big mistake, by the way, a mistake Soleimani made that he won't be making again, by the way. He is strategically patient. He didn't rush into Iran after they took out our drone. He didn't rush into Iran to start World War III. And ladies and gentlemen, let me be clear on this. A lot of you who listen to the show understand my approach to international conflict. I believe strongly in Fox Connors' rules of war, and I would actually interpret that as Fox Connors' rules of conflict as well. The great Fox Connor. You don't go to war alone. You don't go to war for long. And you don't go to war unless you absolutely have to. Fox Connors' rules of conflict. Ladies and gentlemen, I ask you, what other choice did we have? Soleimani was an animal savage who clearly was directly involved in the attack on our embassy in Iraq. He was in Iraq when we took him out. He was in Iraq, and that attack would have led to casualties if it wasn't for a vibrant response by President Trump. An energetic and forceful response, to say the least, to get 100 Marines on the ground, to get QRFs involved, quick reaction teams over there. You would have had another Benghazi on your hands, but we didn't because Barack Obama is not in charge. President Trump was. What other choice did we have? These attacks have been escalating dramatically in the region. We don't seek war in this country. This is a serious thing. It's not a joke. This isn't a Rambo movie. I get that. And everybody involved gets that too. These are real people and real lives involved. But Joe, they were real people and real uh, lives involved as well. When they were trying to storm the front gates of our embassy, they would have ripped those people out of there and killed them. What do you think? That was a joke. That wasn't a Rambo movie either. That actually happened. You want to send some kind of a message that this isn't appropriate or you want to make them wear a dunce cap? I mean, what did you think the Iranians were going to listen to? More chatter and talk? There were more attacks ahead, and there may be more ahead. 
But and I'm going to get to some video by Geraldo. The minute I say that, some of you know what I'm talking about. Some of yeah. you saw it this morning on Fox and Friends. I, I debate Geraldo often, but I have to tell you, I've rarely been as furious with Geraldo Rivera as I was this morning on Fox and Friends. I'm going to play the clip in a minute. It's disturbing and troubling. His commentary, I think, was outlandish and outrageous. And if I get the chance to debate him, believe me, I'm going to say my say. But remember, we didn't ask for this. You did. Having said that, in the history of tweets that have, let's say, aged poorly, like an unfine wine and cheese left out in the Florida sun for months at a time, Check out this tweet by Khomeini, spiritual leader of Iran. This is a tweet he sent out in response to Donald Trump just a few days ago after, while the attack was going on. Quote, Khomeini, talking about Trump. That guy has tweeted that we see Iran responsible for the events in Baghdad, and we will respond to Iran. He says, first, this is Khomeini talking, you can't do anything. Well, that didn't work out too well, did it? Second, if you were logical, which you're not, you'd see that your crimes in Iraq Af and Afghanistan have made nations hate you. Yes, in the history and annals of tweets that have aged rather poorly, the Khomeini telling Trump he can't do anything line um, is probably going to go down in history as one of the dumbest tweets ever put across on a social media platform in the history of the Twitterverse. I guess he could do something. And I guess he did. We didn't ask for this. We don't want this. But if you continue to poke the bear, as I said last night on Fox and Friends, you better have the body bags and the morgue to chill your dead because this president is not messing around. And I wanted to say something different, but due to FCC rules, I have to be very careful. Which, dude? If there was ever a time... For a New York City Queens expletive to be dropped in there, that was it. We don't want this. We didn't ask for this. Iran, you have every opportunity to walk away. Cut your losses now, please. Nobody wants this. Nobody. This is very serious. It's not a joke. It's not a movie. Nobody wants this. But I'm telling you, this will not end well. This will not end well for you. This will not end well for your political leaders. This will not end well for whatever you think your end goal is. You will never, ever reach that end zone. It will not happen. Now, showing you again how the media... You know, I, I, I don't put memes up on the show because there's for all kinds of copyright reasons and things. And I hate memes, especially about... Serious things like war most of the time. Nice. But one of them I saw this morning, it was meant to be, it's, none of this is really in any way humorous, but it made a point. There was a meme up this morning, and it's Donald Trump with a magic hat on. It said, my next magic trick will be getting the Democrats to defend Iran. And sure enough, we've seen that sadly emerge along with their <laughs> buddies, of course, the Democrats in the media. I mean, I just said the same thing twice. Now, remember the Washington Post? I'll get to their tweet in a second. When we killed Baghdadi, another animal savage who Conan the dog was braver than he was and chased him down the tunnel. You remember that a few. I'll get to that headline in a yeah. minute. Yeah, so yeah. we kill this, this terrorist, Joe, Soleimani, a known international terrorist bathed in regional blood again for 20 years. And the Washington Post sends out this tweet with this absolutely bizarre but so typical of the Washington Post headline. Quote, Washington Post. Breaking. Airstrike at Baghdad Airport kills Iran's most revered military leader? Qasim Soleimani, Iraqi state television reports. What kind of crap is yeah, that? Uh, it's Washington Post crap, Joe. Um, Dude, Revered yeah. military leader? You mean the terrorist savage who's been ordering the deaths of innocent people for since 1998? You mean that guy? Or yeah, probably bingo. earlier than that. That's yeah. just when he took yeah. over the Quds Fort. That's right. Yeah. Sorry, dude. No, no, not, that's, you're not going to be sorry about 
Remember this old gem by the Washington Post, too? This headline when we killed Baghdadi? Joe, remember this one? Abu Baker oh, al-Baghdadi, yeah. austere religious scholar yes, at helm of Islamic State, dies at 48. Oh, my gosh. Ladies and gentlemen, I will ask you again what I've asked you before. What side is the American media on? I'm not kidding. It's not a joke. It's not a hyperbolic statement for effect. It is an actual inquiry into your brains. I'm asking you a real question. I expect, I'm, I'm expecting you to ponder this as you're either sitting in your car or watching at home or watching us on YouTube or whatever you may be doing. What the hell? What side are they on? 